It's the internet. You're busy. Let's do this. I'm Jeff Grubb. I write for gamesbeat.com. I do this over here at giantbomb.com. What is this? This is Grub Snacks. It's a show where we talk about video games. Um, as, as was decreed in the texts of old. On this show, we're going to talk about news. You know, we're probably going to talk about all those Silent Hill rumors. I got a few other tidbits I wanted to add on top of the pile. People are saying there's three games. Maybe there's four. And maybe there'll probably only be three in the end. We'll, we'll get into it. Um, what we This show is something where we come together. We interact. You ask me questions. I answer them. If you want to ask a question, there's a button at the top of the page on giantbomb.com slash chat. That button is labeled ask a question that is english for ask a question if you click that you get to ask a question now i know you're probably over on twitch hello and you're wondering where the hell what, what is he talking about we well, got to go to giantbomb.com slash upgrade and you come interact with me live on the show yeah that's called monetization baby and it feels good we want to see you monetize yeah otherwise feel free to watch the show uh, and and i love you very much um we're going to get into this real soon. I'm going to begin answering your questions after this first segment where I talk about the little fun tidbits I was just talking about a second ago. Uh, let's get into it. What are what are those? What are the bits? What are the tids? Okay, let's start with Silent Hill. So, uh, over the weekend, well, maybe it was last week that we talked about like Silent I, I can't remember now. I can't keep it straight anymore. Um, but uh, the, the Silent Hill rumors began coming out and uh and i definitely i think i said silent hill 2 was being made by blooper uh and i don't know where i said that anymore um but then everyone else started coming out and saying yes yeah we've, we're hearing similar stuff um uh there was a lot of people kind of getting i think pretty similar rumors um and i i got some stuff i got some corroborating evidence uh, thanks to your help the people who provided that um and then i also got something like from a, like a re reliable source about like for sure this goes back to be saying that there's definitely a silent hill game in the works at least one um and some of that stuff lines up with the stuff i've heard uh, and maybe not directly and i can only talk about so much of that stuff because it's like um a lot, a lot of the stuff is pretty sensitive to, to the people and, and how they got this information so we're, we're going to be like pretty careful how we talk around some of these things but in general i could say that there uh, is rumors of four Silent Hill games. Now, the three that we keep hearing about are Silent Hill 5. Um, from That's from a studio in Japan. And that'll be like the full new mainline game. These are the images that leaked from Dusk Gollum. And then got DMCA'd by Konami. Digital Entertainment, I believe. Uh, that is Silent Hill 5. Uh, is my understanding. Then there is the Silent Hill 2 remake. And that is from Bloober Team being made in Unreal Engine Five, and they are being told to, to stick very, like, tr like faithfully to the original game, and don't take too many liberties, but use your technical expertise to modernize it for you know modern consoles and modern gamers and stuff like that. Uh, then there is another game being made by a Western studio and being published by a Western publisher, not even being published by Konami. Now. The VGC report says that they think this might be Annapurna. And I think that Annapurna was probably one of the companies in the running. I'm not sure if they got it, but there were other sort of similar companies all trying to get this deal. And one of the interesting things about this deal is I believe that there's probably some tie in to future multimedia content. Um, because there's also, it also seems like there is a movie in the works. If, they, if that, Maybe that's already been announced, but there's a movie in the works and then a TV show in the works. Um, and I think that is tied into the deal that, that the, the Western studio and Western publisher have, and it's all going to be kind of tied in together, um, or at the very least, maybe produced by the same company. Uh, so you can see like An Annapurna has, uh, like ties to Hollywood and stuff. Is, is there, is there Annapurna pictures? I think that's true. I'm not very good at this. Um, I think that's right. Like it's that sort of concept where like, yeah, they'll be making a game and maybe it'll be episodic. And then also they'll be publishing a film and a TV show. Now, again, I don't know if that's Annapurna. I've heard it's a different company. Um, but the point is, it does, it does seem like Konami was licensing stuff up for uh, people to take the, the Silent Hill name, not exclusively, but to do a bunch of stuff with it. And that includes games and movies and TV shows. Um, 
the the fourth game is a smaller potentially side project potential spinoff maybe a mobile game uh it sounds like it's being made in taiwan and it's it, it might come out it might not that's the word is it like it seems very likely it could just get canned if, i mean if it's a mobile game maybe it's one of those things where it's like oh we launched it in canada and australia to test it out and then six months later you hear oh that's never coming out um maybe it's something like that but uh r- right now th- that is the fourth project so like what is the big takeaway here it does seem like konami is doing what gamers have asked it to do with many of its franchises now you know there's still no word about it doing anything similar with metal gear solid or even castlevania um but it does it the company does is like planning this big like coming out party for the future of silent hill and it seems like it was planning this for last year's e3 that is the timeline i've seen where they're like hey we're gonna uh, say hey we have all this stuff in the works for silent hill and you're gonna get this then and then a little bit later you're gonna get this and then a little bit later you're gonna get this and if you are into this franchise we are serving you up a feast um and so you know we don't know what the quality of these games will be we don't know how fans are gonna end up feeling about them whatever but they are trying which is weird um when do we hear about this stuff i think we likely hear about most of these things if not at least one of these things we'll probably hear about this e3 this not e3 whatever um you know but uh, they because konami was planning to be in so was it summer game fest or something else and then they pulled out last minute last year i do think that they would probably come back this year ready with even more stuff to announce and maybe it's like a big silent hill back or maybe they're like hey here's a teaser for one thing join us on this date and we will go over all the silent hill stuff that we're making i don't know uh it definitely feels like um a lot of this comes from the success of that castlevania show on netflix where konami was just like whatever we don't we, we have other ways of making money now and we're not really interested in making video game video games we're gonna make you know we'll make Oh, and we'll make a lot of money off of that and then we'll do some other stuff here and there and we'll make a lot of money and they have been making a lot of money um but then that that Castlevania show did really well, like so well that Netflix and everyone else involved is like, let's do like several spinoffs and make a bunch of stuff. And this property is so ripe for capitalizing on, and we're gonna do that. Um, and I think Konami's sitting there looking around like, oh, we have other potential sources of revenue here that we're just sitting on. And how can we position some of these other franchises so that we are not just licensing off the brand to another company so they can make a couple tv shows that you know are lucrative but what if we had several things in the works to to line up to capitalize on one franchise so that there's games and movies and a tv show and all this other stuff um it does seem like that is uh, uh, uh the result of the success of castlevania okay if you have questions feel free to ask about that stuff uh we'll get into the questions here real soon one other quick thing uh, I mentioned on Kind of Funny Gamescast, which was on this week, earlier, like on Tuesday. Um, that, that episode's out now if you want to listen to it. It was a lot of fun. I love those guys. Uh, except for Andy Cortez, who defeated me to take over the role of number one games journalist in the Kind of Funny Wrestling League, uh, which airs on Mondays. Watch on Monday. I'm getting my revenge. Don't you worry. It's kind of, kind of funny on Twitch. Um but I mentioned there that the, the Last of Us remake is supposed to come out this year. And I, I, like, this is something I've heard repeatedly earlier this year, like a few weeks, few months ago now. Nothing's changed there. I haven't heard any sort of... Re- I, there's no reason to believe that that is suddenly not the plan anymore. Uh, the, but the last I heard is that game is coming this holiday season. Um, maybe it could be later in the year, but it's, it's definitely supposed to come. It's the kind of thing where it's like, if you think about it, if we operate from an assumption that Sony actually really does care about game awards and the game awards, like maybe you do try to get God of War out a little bit earlier. And then what do you put like later in the year, uh, even though they haven't always, they don't always care about that. They have not always cared about that. But, you know, if you want to fill in a game later in the later in the calendar and you don't want to worry about it, having to try to like compete for awards, why not a remake? or a remaster or something like that. So maybe that comes out in November, December, something like that. But um, it does feel like it is supposed to come out this year still. 
And uh, that's what I've heard repeatedly now. And I've heard nothing to the contrary. So I'll, I'll be surprised if it doesn't. Um, I know that seems quick, but I think the work, the work has actually been happening on that for quite a long time now. So yeah, uh, that's all I have this week. I'm still very much in the process of moving and very busy. So uh, I figured why not get to the questions and let them ask the questions and we'll figure it, let them figure out what we're going to talk about. That's a good plan. I'm into it. All right, let's do it. Um, okay. Where's, what's my, where's my question button? Oh, I hit the wrong thing. It doesn't matter. We're all good. Okay. Let's see here. Let's start with uh, this person called Tokoto. Disgusting. Where are we going to see the upcoming Final Fantasy 16 and Final Fantasy 7 Remake 2 news? Will they be in the same show? Um, my guess here, I have two guesses, and I know, I'm not sure which one is more likely, but I think either Summer Game Fest proper. Okay, no, now I'm not, I'm not thinking about it. And it's like, okay, if Sony does a show in June, we'll get a, we'll get at least one of those at the Sony show. We still don't know if that's going to be the case. I don't know if that's the case. I have zero real idea if that's going to happen. I'll say when it comes to a Sony show, I feel like I would be hearing more at this point if it was happening. In the past, what people have asked me about this, and I say, well, listen, I don't know if it's happening, but I haven't heard anything concrete, and that usually means something isn't happening. And that is almost always borne out. That has almost always been the case. And this year, it's like, well, I've heard these two sets of rumors, but nothing concrete. And I'm like, well, maybe it's in early June, and everyone's like, Jeff Grubb says there's a thing in June. Um, no, I'm still like, at this point, I'm kind of leaning against that anything happening in June from Sony. But if it does, I think at least one of these things will be at that show. Now, on the other hand, uh, Sony does like to do like their dedicated Final Fantasy events, right? Where they, uh, uh, where they just bring out uh, Greg Miller or whatever and say, hey, Final Fantasy 15 is coming. I, I think if they have like multiple things to talk about regarding Final Fantasy, like maybe they just do an event and talk about all of that together. Um, and maybe they do that in June. I think that they probably would be like, we're getting real close. They probably would have announced that by now, but maybe that's what the, the tease was like something's coming in June. Um, but still they, they tend to announce those things pretty far out. So I would lean towards actually just trying to shuffle it into one of these other shows, uh, either a Sony show, maybe summer game fest. From Nylock, when will we see the Firaxis Marvel game again? That's a, that's a good question. Um, I, I wonder if they're going to try to wait until uh, they really get that thing nailed down. It does seem like they were worried about the reception. And I, I mean, they're not going to rip the card stuff out, right? But there's a lot of people who are just immediately scoffing at the idea of a, a card game and being that like, because they're just like, no, I want to, when I press the button, when I press the punch button, I want them to punch. I don't want to play a card that says punch. That's what they sound like. Um, and so yeah, I, I think that they, they're they probably going to work on like amping up the presentation so that it feels more d dynamic and kinetic. Um, and that probably has taken some time. Uh, I can ask around. I haven't asked about this game in quite some time. I was just like, ah, oh, they'll show it when they show it. Um, but, you know, if we don't get it in June, if we don't hear about it again in June, I don't, I don't know when we hear about it. <laughs> that's just well great gersman impression <laughs> um from delta prime hey jeff is nixie still working on pre-sony contracts or are they fully at work on porting ps4 ps5 games to pc now i i don't know they probably still have a few pre-sony contracts that they are working through um but then yes as soon as those are all up expect them to go full hog on getting more games to PC and, and pretty quickly. There's a ton they can do, um, and they're they're going to go hog on that, yeah. Uh, ham? They're going to go ham on that. That's actually what I'm trying to say. Uh, from Vector the Angel, you will not ignore my question again. Since you have a lot of basic B opinions, what's something you like that's unique? What's the thing you consider fun and unique about yourself? Keep it pos positive. You're a cool dude. Or All right, moving on. Just I'm just joking. Uh, I don't know. I, I listen, I'll say that um, 
I am okay with being a basic B and that there's usually almost zero wrong with that. And, um, and I think that what's unique is being very positive about like, yeah, I'm okay with going to Cheesecake Factory. You're not adventurous because you're going to a restaurant. Like, we, like if you're going, we're gonna go travel and we're gonna go try the local food. It's just food. You're not adventurous. Do a crime, go break a law. Then you'll, then we'll start talking about how adventurous you are. Like, it's just um, the most basic level of, uh, of I'm a world traveler. I'm, I'm gonna do the voice again. Um, I'm not really gonna be that judgy about it, but it, like, if you're gonna come back on me and be like, you just go to the fast food and cheesecake factory, you are, well, well try something adventurous. Like, no, that we're not gonna actually have this competition. Um, but if I like say, I don't know, I think the things that that are are unique about me are just like, um, I I don't know. I feel like this is a, I'm gonna get an area of vanity or something like that, and that makes me uncomfortable. But I do like the way that I kind of see the world when I'm like teaching my kids stuff or when I'm handling situations. Uh, I'm uh, pretty good at at like stepping outside of myself and and analyzing what's really happening and be able to like just get down to uh, the basics instead of being emotional about it. Um, I like that about myself. If you're really asking, from JP Terps fan, any updated rumblings about some sort of Sony presentation in June? Nothing like yeah, like I said, nothing new. Um, which continues to make me think there probably won't be something in June. I would love to be wrong. I, I mean, you know, the, 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 the places I'm hearing that from are, play, are places that tend to generate accurate info. Um, and, but it's not, look, it, that doesn't mean that it's never wrong. It, ju it just means that generally they know better than most people. And that's why I was willing to say that that rumor is out there. Um, but in terms of me being able to nail it down myself to the point where I'm comfortable putting it on the uh, the list, that, that we're not there yet. From Mr. McCrinkledink, hey Jeff, with the rumors of a Switch Pro slash Switch Two ruminating again, what time frame do you think Nintendo is looking for looking at for something like that? I've been on the fence for buying a Switch, but I'm holding out for Metro Prime Four or an upgraded console. Um, I, I mean, I still think that we get it in March 2024. That's still my timeline. Um, there are a lot of like factors pulling back and forth on that time where the, the, here's the biggest factor. The Switch is going to sell at least 20 million consoles this year if Nintendo could produce that many. And you don't really put out a new Switch or a new system when you have something that's still selling 20 million consoles and selling to like an audience that is not going to be like that moved by new hardware and just wants like a bunch of like fun family games. Um, we've seen that the family gaming audience is like the one that is spending a ton of money and really turns games into massive hits if it appeals to everybody. Um, and I think that, uh, they want to just keep going for them and that, so they're, they're not going to rush. And they've said that they've said as much in their earnings that we're at the midpoint of the, of the life cycle and stuff like that. <clears throat> um, and, and so, but the other factors are hardware is advancing and NVIDIA does have new chips that they could use. And, um, you know, the, the, like the Samsung and TSMC fabric, like fabrication facilities, uh, that they need to get online need to come online and the, to make that stuff make sense. You need to start selling those things to consumers, um, so that you can get, uh, enough like yield going to, to make it, to make the whole business work. Um, but that pressure is only so high when, when compared to if we just keep selling the switch, we're going to sell another 20 million and make quite a bit of profit on the hardware. And, uh, then we'll, that, and then this means if we put out a, you know, if we put out Metroid prime four or we put out the next Mario game and then, and the switch two isn't here, we're going to be selling to 130, 140 million people that own a switch or 140 million switch systems out in the world. What it, we, you know, however you want to count that. And, that is really compelling, especially if people are still buying a lot of Switch games, which I, you know, I, I'm still, like I bought a Switch in 2017 or I got a Switch sent to me and then I, I've bought several since then. Um, but I've had it from day one and I still p tend to play a lot of games on Switch. And as long as the enthusiasm from the consumer is still there to purchase games on Switch, which is usually the biggest issue. The, the issue is not so much that the hardware is out of date. Like that is a problem, but that what that that's like um a, a thing that leads to the real problem, which is the symptom of 
people then get less excited to purchase games for their console. So yeah, there's a hundred and what, like 120, 130 million PS2s out there, something like that, or PS2, PS4s out there. I mean, PS2 as well, like, yeah, there's 155 million PS2s out in the world. Well, people stopped getting excited about buying games for that, so you had to stop supporting it. Same thing sort of happened with PS4, where people see the PS5 out there and they're like, hey, I, love my ps4 but i'm sort of getting over the idea of buying new games for it when i think i just want to wait until i get the new hardware and nintendo's fully aware of this and so they're going to continue trying to thread this needle of maximizing the returns from the switch while also trying to smoothly do a transition to the next generation um so in my opinion i the, the, the time that makes the most sense for that is we get holiday 2022 no switch to or switch pro really um and then we get holiday 2023 and that is when they announce that in march there's going like there's going to be a new one and then they kick it off from there and then holiday 2024 is uh, all all focused on the on this new new machine and slowly phasing out the old switch and everything should be cross compatible it should basically just be a switch uh, like a like it should be like an iPhone upgrade, basically, is how it will work. And, uh, and that gives them time to sort of put those pieces into place to make sure that transition goes smoothly. And they've already started talking about that as well. Like, oh, the Nintendo account is going to be how we're going to transition people, which is they, they see it working for Sony and they want that for them. From PJ24, how come Sony is only releasing one PSP game for the new PS Plus service? Even Nintendo offer more and love and love to drip feed this stuff. Um... I honestly don't know. I my, I'm like I looked at that list and I I, if I had a busy week and I'm kind of like, this is they're probably gonna fill this out even more in the next couple of weeks and I'm kind I want to give them the benefit of the doubt a little bit here and want to like just wait and see, and um, like once this service is actually playable for us, if there's still only one PSP game, eh, that will be a that'd be pretty disappointing, pretty weird, um, and I think they just need to get that service to a point where. There are several big key pieces there so that it feels like it's already over the hump instead of feeling like, oh, maybe they're going to get there. Are they going to drip feed us? Stuff like that. I mean, I I, I don't know. I, it's hard for me to think that maybe Sony's looking over Nintendo and being like, well, that's what we're going to do. That seems like not something Sony would do. And also, it's not exactly working for Nintendo. We're just sick people over here when it comes to Nintendo fans who are like, oh, I hate this. Here's my money. Like that's what I do as a Nintendo fan, um, and I, 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 you know, I guess maybe Sony's like expecting they could probably do the same. But uh, I, I do expect the service to grow faster than what Nintendo Switch Online is growing. Uh, uh, that you know, a faster rate. From Feast Feast of Violet, is there any indications that Red Dead Redemption Two came anywhere close to, to Take Two's sales expectations? I mean. I think it probably did. I guess take two. Listen, that 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 game sold like what, like 30 million, 35 million copies by now. No game sells that much. There are like a handful that have sold that many copies. Uh, really, a handful. And w- w- even when we're talking about Nintendo's games being like these world beaters that sell two, three times as many uh, copies as exclusive Xbox or PlayStation games, we're talking about Animal Crossing mario kart 8 deluxe and then maybe one or two other games getting close to like 30 35 million um red dead redemption 2 has definitely it, it, if they had expectations above that it's because they were expecting red dead online to turn into this thing where it's a perpetual seller and it was never going to do that even if it was um the ideal version of red dead online like at a certain point the appeal of an open world city like where you can exist in uh, has more possibility space. And we've seen this with like the role play stuff. There's more possibility space with an online urban city than with an online o- old West environment. And uh, it's just going to be a- appealing to more people as well. Like there's, uh, I, I mean, I'll just s- certain minorities who'll be like, Oh, role playing in the old West is uh, not that attractive to me because I would not have been welcome here. Um, whereas a modern urban environment, pe- anyone can make that their own. <laughs> And so uh, it was, I think it was an easy prediction to make. And this is one I made like right before it came out. It's like Red Dead Redemption 2 is going to be a massive, massive success. You know, at a certain point I was like, if it's not good, maybe it won't be, but 
if it is good, my, my point, it would be a massive success, but after a few months, it was going to drop below Grand Theft Auto on the charts. And that happened after like four or five months, it was below Grand Theft Auto and has remained below Grand Theft Auto 5 every month ever since, except for like a couple of months where it got boost from one thing or the other. Um, and I don't, I think that they probably knew this. They probably should have known this. I think they did know this. And uh, I, I would imagine that game has mostly met their expectations and maybe Red Dead Online has not. Um, yeah. How do you know when you're satisfied? Yes, I don't know. All right, from Kyle Degradable, which rhymes with biodegradable, is it possible that Starfield and Redfall were both pushed out of the Xbox One window because they were having a hard time with the older consoles and plan on dropping and plan on dropping the Xbox One support? So, Starfield was always announced as next gen only, new gen only. Um, and I don't know about Redfall. I thought Redfall was as well. Um, but maybe I, I don't honestly remember. So maybe, maybe Redfall is dropping that stuff and that would be helpful. Every company that has got like a big major game that is doing cross-gen has struggled with the last gen versions. Absolutely. Um, except for maybe, maybe the horizon team, the horizon, uh, both horizon teams, playgrounds and, um, and, uh, the, uh, horizon forbidden West is the studio. Uh, that game ran pretty well in the last gen, but everyone else seems to really struggle with last gen consoles. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if Redfall was supporting that. Wouldn't be, wouldn't be surprised if we, next time we hear about it, it's like, no, no thanks. Um, what's up, kiddo? Okay. Yeah, it's a little bit ripped. Tell you what, I'll see if I can fix it. Yo, you're, it's your purple froggy? Okay, I know purple's your favorite color. I will fix this later when I'm done with my show, okay? Go put it somewhere safe. All right, thanks, kiddo. All right, we're going to have to fix that purple froggy, everybody. Um... All right, where are we at? I talked to Kyle Degradable a second ago, so let's go on to Mento. Uh, given what we heard from that newsletter, what are the chances Jim Ryan will scrap the old games catalog for PS Plus and instead release a Sony Nintendogs called Pooch Station? <laughs> uh, I mean, they're very high. Um, I did make the, uh, the album art for the last podcast uh, that I did, uh, Imagine Dogs with Jim Ryan smiling really big. Uh, like Ubisoft Imagine. Like, there, it turns out there was never an Imagine Dogs. I was like looking for that game. Like there's gotta be. They had Imagine Babies and Imagine like pets, but it was there was never one just called Imagine Dogs with a Z. Uh, so I had to create my own. And I tell you what, most people probably would not have like, they were like, yeah, of course there was an Imagine Dogs. And uh, yes, there's lots of Imagine Dragons. <laughs> Imagine Doggins, yes. From Bad at Games. Flames Oilers game last night, best game or bestest game? It was a very good game. Um, tell you what, Connor McDavid could just sort of put a game on his back, huh? Uh, he is super, super fun to watch. Uh, you could, he's also like, you can tell he's like detached. He's almost like an alien. He's almost like from another planet. And that makes it even more fun. Cause like when he does get emotional, it's like, uh-oh, like I'm scared. He's getting emotional. Um, but yeah, that's going to be, and that Calgary Flames team is also just very, very good. And uh, I'm kind of, I think I'm actually might be pulling for them now. Um, I would love to see Calgary win. From Complex Nobody. Good morning, Jeff, Jeff, Grub, Grub. Do you know if we'll see more of Saber Interactive's Warhammer Space Marine 2 in the E3 timeframe or later? I don't know. Haven't heard much about that at all for quite some time. Um... Are they, the, the Saber Interactive, uh, like I, I don't have the web of Embracer Group developers in front of me. Who do they fall under? Is it, do they fall under just Embracer and like kind of stand on their, on their own? Or are they like under THQ Nordic or one of these other ones? Um, Cause THQ Nordic has a show in August. So maybe it shows up there. Uh, but I honestly don't remember where Saber falls on that, uh, that business spectrum. Um... Yeah, everyone talked about how Austin Matthews is better. They all seem quiet now. Um, the reality is Austin Matthews, very good at scoring goals, but he, I think I would rather have a player who's good in all situations. Um, it seems like you could put Connor McDavid back on defense and he would still be the best player on the ice. And I think I'd rather have that. From Sandwich Jones, is Red Lynx, uh, like Ubisoft's trials team, working on a new trials? I love the series, but the last one seemed up its own butt with its loot boxes and confusing map structure. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping they get another crack at it. Yeah, I, it does seem like they are trying to figure out like what a, the future of Trials can be. Um, 
and they keep sort of stumbling along the way. I really like that last trials, but it was all about, I really like the courses. The courses, as long as the courses are great, you're going to have a great trials. And they had some of the best courses ever in that game. Um, but you're right. The, the, uh, the structure of advancing through the game and the map was confusing you know, up its own, butt is actually a pretty fair uh, analysis of what that is. I love trials, like truly love it. Like, you know, like it, to my core, I love trials. Um, it's exactly my kind of game, a physics platformer with m like a motorcycle, like a motorsport thing turned into a trial, like a platforming game. It's perfect for me. Um, I hope they just get to keep making them forever at a certain point, And that would be the perfect world where just every three to four years, we get a new trials. Um, it does feel like that seems less and less likely. I don't know if Red Lynx is making another one. Uh, but if they're not making another one, I don't know what they could be making. Um, so yeah, and the thing is, they they've like all the ideas that they could do, ne like like building out the customization stuff and the and the the user generated content stuff. They've done that better than almost any other game in previous games, and so it's like ah, uh, like you're not gonna make like a Trials Maker because you've already done that, and it's a huge part of those games. So uh, I'm like, I don't know where they go next, but I hope they get another chance. From Arjun N. They just announced the PC gaming show is on June 12th. Linked with some teases. Did I, um... I thought I put that on the thing. I thought they already announced that, but maybe... Okay, that's right. I think they, um... I think that was just like a placeholder. Let's see. I'm gonna go look and see where I, where I put that on my game mess list. June 12th. Yeah, PC gaming show. So I, I, Maybe I just guessed, but I put PC gaming show and future game show on there for June 12th. Um, the future game show is also happening that day, right? Is that still correct? It makes sense. That's usually they usually try to do it like after the Xbox show. That makes sense. Okay. Um from Holy Umbrella. With the lack of Metal Gear Solid on Sony's new subscription service, do you think they will post the Metal Gear games leading up to whatever the next uh Metal Gear game is, or do you think they will likely never come to the service? Yeah, I I was sure that the Metal Gear games would just reappear along with this service reappearing. Or, you, know, you know, the launch of P PlayStation Plus, like Plus, whatever it is. Um, like, here it is. It's, it's a big coming out party. And guess what? All the Metal Gear games that got delisted are now back. And here's Metal Gear Solid 4 for everybody. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, to me, this seems, it's kind of worrisome. Um, and they probably, it does, it does feel like they would need more of an impetus to figure it out like they would need a new metal gear game to come along and be like okay i guess we'll go back and figure out all the right stuff and make sure that we get stuff uh, in place um but i mean i suppose they did they did say that they needed to um take some like news footage out of the game I, so I, they were, like, all of them are, have come down so I, i'm not sure if they and, and really how much faith do we have in konami and being able to go into a kojima game and go into the code and be able to like work out whatever they need to work out to make sure those games are good i i suppose what they would just do is relicense all the footage and but still i don't i don't know why that affects every single game um hopefully this is something we won't have to wait much longer for otherwise get a steam deck and rock and roll from uh abs b hi jeff i recently saw the documentary val and found it fascinating and made me wonder Horrendous circumstances aside, would there be any person involved in video games that you, you would like to see a similar style documentary about? Um, I mean, I, I really, there, there's like so many like um, uh, developers that would make a, a, a good subject of a documentary. Um, but I, I, okay. I think I would want like the real, like I, he wouldn't, like the thing with Val, Val is this is all Val's footage and he, Val Kilmer, and he kind of put it together and he was behind it. I would not want this for the subject I'm about to say. I would want sort of a true journalistic documentary crew, similar to what you get on PBS or whatever. Uh, but I would like the story of David Jaffe's career and like what his relationship is to video games now. Um, and and I just kind of like, I think that it would be like, I, I, obviously he's a figure that has been sort of ostracized um, for, you know, for good reasons in many cases. 
Um, but I would like to like see that arc and see where people. Yeah, no, you know, I know. Yeah, well, I'm not. I, yeah, he sucks. I'm not saying he doesn't suck. I'm saying I would still like to see like the relationships that people have. Like, because when he like talks about like, oh, I, you know, Sony should have told me this stuff. Well, what relationship does the Sony actually have with you now? Um, you know, I've watched documentaries about awful people all the time. People like I'm. Not, yeah, that's why you want the journalistic version. That's why I don't want him to tell his own story. Exactly. Um, but hey, I'm just trying to think of like of someone who'd be like controversial and worth, still worth diving into. Um, and I think that that's probably right there on that that edge, that 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 line. Um, from Doug Foot, hi, Mister Grub. With Xbox's growing number of studio slash projects and them sticking to roughly a 90 minute presentation, just how many third party games should we expect to see at their event? I don't know if they're, I wouldn't be able to give you a number, but I mean, I will say that they will try to get some big third party games in there for sure. Um, they definitely want some, they, they want like the, the biggest games that you can kind of think of. I wouldn't be surprised if they like tried to get something from, from Dead Space, but uh, I don't think that would be ready for that. Cause they're going to show Dead Space gameplay in October, they said. So, um, but like that's the level of game where I think they were trying to get it into their show. And how many, the problem is, is how many of those games are really available for them to do that with. Um, from Priority 7, hey Jeff, it's my birthday today. Happy birthday. Going with the fam to get some fancy burgers tonight. Ooh, what's your go-to birthday meal? Um, I like e either um, to go just like to an authentic Mexican restaurant or I like Mongolian barbecue. Uh, just go like one of those things where you like, you get the bowl of stuff and you give it to the man and the man behind the big Mongolian grill just does his thing. Or, you know, even hibachi. I like hibachi too. But hibachi is usually our Christmas Eve thing. It's our Christmas Eve tradition. At least it was before the pandemic. Um, so for my birthday, I'd probably want to go to Mongolian barbecue. And then, yeah, tacos is always good too. Uh, Jeff, you should watch Spy, X, Spy Cross Family. Okay, what is that? Give me more information, Christian. Um, from... Lil John 2137, any idea what's going on with Abandoned? Lance McDonald recently tweeted that it's likely a scam, but then deleted it saying he does not want his name associated with this shitstorm and that we should and that we would find out very soon. Um it, it, I mean, listen, a scam is a is a uh, strong word, and I think it almost applies here. There's definitely more and more evidence that they were purposely trying to uh um they you know, Hassan or whatever was purposely trying to uh, allude to Kojima and Silent Hill, even though he did not have any sort of relationship with those things. Um, but I don't know. I, I've uh, to me, this is like it doesn't pass the smell test, right? Immediately, it didn't pass the smell test. But these days, of course, not at all. You you glance at it, you sniff it, and it either smells bad and rotten, or there's nothing there at all. And so you just, I, I just toss it aside and don't even think about it anymore. Um, nothing's going to come of this. There will, I, I mean, I really think that there will never be a video game called Abandoned or that was once called Abandoned and gets a new name. You're, you're never going to play this game. Like, it's not a real going concern. It is uh, a, it feels like to me, it's something of a delusion. It feels to me like it's something of a, like a borderline scam, but like, like the kind of scam where it's like the, the creator is trying to almost talk himself into doing it. Like, like he doesn't know any other way of creating stuff. So he's just like, fake it till you make it, which is in a lot, I mean, how a lot of things do get done, uh, but then there's no there there. There is nothing behind all of that, those actions. Um, and I, to me that it is pretty obvious. I mean, especially at this point, but to me, it was very obvious from the beginning that that was the case. And I've been, I was saying it you know, those first couple of weeks when all this stuff was happening is, there will never be a game to come out of this. From Arbitrary Water. Hi, Jeff. In another will this old game franchise ever come back question, will Might and Magic ever come back? Does Ubisoft know what to do with the, with its properties? Yeah, you know, someone asked about this a little bit ago, and uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't have an answer, and I still don't really know. Um, Ubisoft is definitely kind of focused on a handful of properties right now, and Might and Magic does not seem like one of them. Uh, but that doesn't mean it will never go back it just doesn't seem like that's going to happen anytime soon maybe i'm wrong from being cpm if another media company bought this show from giant bomb would it be considered a snack position yes that's exactly what would happen yes um 
Let's see. Uh, I think the chance is getting it through my. Uh, t- uh, any SOCOM news? Says Frankie Beans. Uh, uh, you yeah, know, no SOCOM news. Although I think that may be one of those ten games, those ten live service games. One of those has to be SOCOM, right? I mean, you're doing a lot of. It, it's like a lot of effort. Like you're making to put a lot of effort into live service games. Why not just like give one the advantage of being called SOCOM? Um, from Complex Nobody, is Mario a short king? in relation to Pauline's. Yeah, definitely. He's definitely, well, I mean, he might just be short, but no, I think he's a short king in, in relation to Pauline's especially. In relation to everybody too. Uh, from Fridgewater, what music are you listening to these days? Yeah, uh, Blood Orange. I might've talked about this on the show recently, but uh, I was listening to an NPR show and like uh, they did one of their, their their bumps or stingers and the music had like this really great horn section in it. And I was like, man, what is this? So I got out the phone I'm like, Google, what song is this? And it did a good job of like, just immediately telling me Blood Orange Chosen or Blood Orange Choose, I think it's the name of the song. Uh, but then I was like, oh, everything by this band is incredible. So uh, listening to a lot of Blood Orange, um, still recently the kids have been asking for Cruise and Blast again. Um, just giving me ideas about a thing I wanna do, but we'll, I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can make that happen. I don't really know if I'll be able to make that happen. Um, and then uh, what else? There was some other stuff, but it's always Steely Dan. It's usually almost always just Steely Dan. Uh, from Joey Gills. Uh, oh, and the Pixies. I've been going. I've been getting back into the Pixies recently. Uh, Joey Gills, Mr. Grub Snacks. What was the name of that Mario blog you referenced? I think I need some of that in my life. Yeah, Super Mario Broth. So like Super Mario Brothers, but Super Mario Broth. Um, they, they, they like just follow them on Twitter. They post stuff all the time, and then I think they might still have like a, a Tumblr or something where they post all their all their things. But it's it's fantastic. It's like um, they've been collecting weird Mario cur- curios for years and years now. There's so much good stuff uh, that they've collected. Um, like I like the name Joey Gills, by the way. Uh, from it's just Kevin V. What new horror game would you like to see that isn't a Resident Evil or Silent Hill? I'm not the biggest horror game player. I'm a, I'm a pretty big coward. Um, more, more than that, it's just like. I don't like being super stressed out when I'm playing games. Um, and if I am being if I am being stressed out, I want it to be sort of a skill based thing, um, where I'm like trying to like set a new time or trying to uh, set a new high score or I'm playing other people online. Um, being stressed out by like the game, it's I, I don't know. Uh, but if I like if I like what horror franchise or what horror game would I like to see? Um, I don't know. I think maybe they could bring back Splatterhouse and make that like even scarier. Um, I think that, that, that could be fun. I suppose you play as the, like the, as the bad guy, but I, I've still, I've, I think there's a way to do that. Um, let's see, from Watchmen, how about the Battle of Alberta last night? And it's only game one. Um, and what about the Battle of South Alberta, which is Florida, between uh, Florida and Tampa Bay? Um, uh, yes. Okay. So yeah. That, again, that Edmonton Calgary game, very, very good. Uh, I I was not too surprised when when Calgary or I'm sorry when Edmonton started coming back. That was um, again just a lot of fun to watch. From Mockbucket sixty two, how's your hype level for Saints Row? Plenty of previews drop for it. Uh, it goes up and down. It does this thing. Um, my hype level right now for it is I am ready to give it a shot for myself. Um, a big a big reason I loved Saints Row 3 and 4, and I know there are a lot of, like, Saints Row 2, like, diehards out there. Um, I don't get it. Uh, but uh, f- the reasons I love Saints Row 3 and 4 were because of the characters and the writing, uh, the relationships they had with each other, the relationships they had with themselves, like, especially, like, um, uh, uh, what's her name? Going back, like, meeting her, her old self, uh, meeting her fun self uh, from Saints Row 2. Um, and the game being able to, like, dig into that stuff like there was just so much uh family dynamics happening that was hard not to fall in love with those characters and i still think that this could be this new saints rose biggest weakness is they don't just like not have those characters they have characters that might be actively sort of off-putting um they do seem like they've toned that down um but if they go like i don't know if they start talking about I don't know. I, I mean, I, have I said this before? They feel like characters out of a truth.com ad. They're like, man, smoking is for turkeys. 
Like that's what they, it kind of feels like that. And maybe that's not fair. And again, I'm like not really ready to make that my judgment call. I haven't played the game and I'm ready to be won over. And maybe if this is going to be a bait and switch with my expectations here and the reality being way over there and I'll be happy with it. But uh, I'm not too hyped other than it does look fun to like jump around that open world, which is actually another big important part uh, of the recent Saints Row games. And looks like it's going to be a big part of this as well. Um, Let's see. Let's go to the top. Uh, I'm not a chicken, you're a turkey. That's right, yes. Um, yeah, no, listen, if you think it looks okay, that's 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 fine. Like, this is very much my own sort of um, relationship to the Saints Row games. And I think overall, as a game, it does look pretty good. Uh, but I, I just, I wanted to get to that next level of, um, like, it doesn't have to do the same thing again as when you got in the car with your buddy and it started playing Sublime. But that moment is almost singular in games. We didn't, we don't have a lot of examples of a game like creating characterization that is also super familiar to an entire generation of people uh, where I instantly understood who these characters were when they started going like, oh, this is my song. We used to listen to this all the time back in high school. I'm like, yeah, we did. I absolutely, we were playing Sublime on repeat in the van while driving to go snowboarding and smoking a lot of marijuana, yes. You got it. Um, and I, I get that, that that I'm old now, and so they do have to leave some of that stuff behind. I just, to me, the characterization that they might be going for seems false. It does not have any familiarity to anyone, and instead has a, a misplaced familiarity that they think represents either young millennials or Gen Zers. And really, this is a character of that in a way that is not, is almost like a, I don't like this. I, I, you think this is what I'm like? Uh, it's not really what I'm like. Again, I hope to be wrong. This is just my first hand, like off the cuff, watches the stuff, like maybe this is how it can go. The final game, I'm ready to try for myself and judge it on what it actually is. Um, Let's see, from Jay Ford, any idea what's going on with Phoenix Wright 7? I feel like I ha I heard the Ace Attorney Chronicles remaster did well last year, but it's been a while since we got a new game in the series. Yeah, no, I don't know. Um, you know, those games probably only cost so much to make, and they seem to do pretty well. Um, but Capcom has had a, a series of major hits, and they might be, like, looking at opportunity costs, where, okay, this game makes its money back, um, and it's growing, maybe. But if we put those resources to something big, um, maybe we can make even more money. I, I hope that's not the case. I think it's probably not the case. But if we continue to not hear about a new Phoenix Wright, it probably has something to do with opportunity. I mean, that's what's happening with, with Mega Man, right? They just, the, 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 putting in resources in the Mega Man takes away from putting resources into other things that do create this much bigger return. From Afterlight Josh, uh, why does Jeff Keighley put on Summer Game Fest? Does he make money from it? Or does he really just love video game conferences? Oh, honey. Oh, honey. Um, I did a, an episode on this, of this show, where we talked where we talked about how it kind of works. And I'll, I'll just give you the quick version again. Um, if you're Nintendo, if you're Sony, if you're Microsoft, you go to Jeff Keighley and you said, we have a big game and we want to put it in your show. It, just, I know that's not always how it works. Like, let's just say that's what was happening. Jeff Keighley would be like, okay, well, I'm gonna put it in the show. And now he's got big games to, that's going to attract an audience that can attract advertisers and sponsors. And he makes money from that and makes a lot of money from that. Then let's say a indie studio comes to him and says, oh my God, you're going to have 80 million people watching the show. We need that. Can we please be in your show? Like Sony and Microsoft and Nintendo. And Jeff Keighley goes, Ooh, the show's pretty packed, but here's our menu of sponsorship slots. And if you have $100,000, $150,000, you too can be in the show. And he makes a lot of money from that. So, uh, yeah, he makes, listen, this, I mean, it's a, he knows what he's doing. Like, let's be real. This is not some um, slimy operation. It, it is what it needs to be. Um, and if it's not like operating from the cost of, of, you know, Nintendo, Microsoft, and Sony paying hundreds of thousands of dollars for boost space on the E3 show floor, it needs to be the what, what it is, which is why it does feel different from classic E3. It feels like a much more commercial version of that. Um, but in the end, 
Jeff Keighley is putting on these shows because it, it is his business. And, and he does make a lot of money from it. And shout out to Shik Hydrobot. Yes, that's right. Um, from C. Moosey. With everyone announcing their show for June, are there any major publishers companies you think won't host a showcase? Yeah, I was, I, I think a few weeks ago, I was saying Ubisoft probably wouldn't. Now I'm like, I've, I'm like flipping around, like maybe they will, or at least maybe they'll show up a lot in some other sh uh, showcases. Um, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't think Activision Blizzard's going to have their own thing. They're going to have Call of Duty trailer, and then they'll be in the Summer Game Fest and stuff like that. So um, I, I don't know. I, I, like I said earlier, I'm still split on Sony. Uh, I don't know if they're going to do something or not. Um, I just think this this year is a little bit different than previous years, uh, where they could have they did they could wait till September or whatever, especially like before the PS5 was out. Um, this year, I feel like they could probably do with updating fans a little bit sooner. From Sevward, hey Grub, I've got a bridge in Brooklyn that I'm looking to offload. Primo location, good condition. Hit me up if you're interested. Okay, let me uh, let me DM you. Uh, I am. I'm ready to put all my life savings into what you've got here. Uh, Complex Nobody. Hey, Jeff, Jeff. Hey, Jeff Grub. Okay. Uh, hey, Jeff, Jeff Grub Grub. How are the Xbox Showcase Leagues coming along? That's a good one. I wanted to mention this. Xbox seems much more locked down this year than last year. Um, they um, So last year was very leaky. It was very, well, I mean, I, I say very leaky. I got the whole show. There was a lot of other rumors that were just flat out wrong. There was a lot of people hearing stuff about Avowed and, and Hellblade 2 showing up. And I'm like, no, folks, it's not happening. Um, but but, uh, but still, it, it was leaky enough that I got the full showcase. I don't think I'm going to get the full showcase this year. They seem much more locked down. Um, they seem to be taking the secrecy of their show much more seriously. And uh, and so, hey, that, that's fine. I wasn't planning on leaking the show anyhow, even if I got it. I didn't last year. Um, I wasn't going to this year. Uh, but I, th this just means I, I probably won't have it either to like help pre-write all my stuff and things like that, like we did last year. So yeah, um, so the leaks are still coming if they're going to come at all. That's kind of where we're at. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if we get to the showcase and I don't know what's happening, which at a certain point is kind of fun, and I'm okay with that. Getting the thing with showcase leaks and show leaks is they are the, some of the least fun stuff because I do have to see, sort of figure out like what do I do with this information? Like it's my job to get this information and then distribute it in a way that makes sense for my audience. And um, a lot of times I find good ways of doing that. We talk about this all the time. Like if I can use a leak to explain to you the thinking of a company, I'm gonna do it. But just to say, here's the showcase and here are all the games uh, is almost always just the kind of thing where it's like, oh, he's just showing off that he knows and he's just ruining the surprises now. And I tend to agree with that. Like, I think I think you're right. Like, that's not fun. That's why I didn't do it last year. Um, so not getting those leaks is kind of something I'm, I'm fine with. I want to keep working on the periphery, on weird stuff, on things like, why aren't they doing this game or what's taking so long with that game? That's the stuff I kind of want to keep getting for people. From Beef Motron, outside of Nintendo, how many recent AAA games can you name that were not delayed before launch? Uh, well, I have a terrible memory, but I, I I would say I can't think of many at all. Oh, come, oh, come here! What's going on here? Are you a bat? Show, sure, show sure, everybody. That's a flying bat. Oh my goodness! I'm so scared. <laughs> um, like she came up wearing a mask. I'm like, oh, you could be on stream now. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> bat. Oh, it's a bat girl. Oh, you do you see yourself down there? Yeah. Uh, beef, I can't think of any. Um, was there uh, any, any kind of, yeah, here, everybody, it's the new Gotham Knights character, that's right. Say, I'm gonna get you, Joker. I am. <laughs> okay, you know what, go play. All right, I'll be done soon, kiddo. Um, all right, where are we at? Yes, outside of Nintendo, how many recent AAA games can you name that were not delayed before launch? Um... I mean, you know, there's usually Call of Duty's hit their day, release dates, right? But like Battlefield got delayed, needed probably more of a delay. Halo got delayed. I'm like just trying to think of shooters recently. Yeah, they all they all got delayed for the most part. Um, I don't know, Horizon, the Horizon got delayed. 
Forza Horizon 5. Did that make did that make its uh release date? Probably something like that. Uh I there's not many. Especially in these last two years, most of these games get delayed. And I, I would expect many of the games that we're talking about for this year to continue going through that process. I mean, most of them don't even have exact dates because that's just where we're at with all with making games. Uh, from Mock Gogo, what the hell is Twisted Pixel Game Studios up to? I don't know. It's a name I haven't heard in a long time. I don't know. What have they done most recently? Ah, it's a bat. All right, go play. Go play, dork. From Timonius. Have developers started pushing back on Nintendo about their plans for whatever their uh, next Switch is? It's got to be hard to develop for such an old spec, which is probably the same reason that PS4, Xbox One versions of games are getting canceled recently. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely a, a large contingency, 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 contingency. There's a large group of game developers who would love to probably put their games out on Switch and continue to be like, that doesn't make sense for us, or we're going to have to do a cloud version, and no one really loves that. Um, but they also know that they can't sort of push back on Nintendo and expect much to change. Um, maybe if everyone was, or maybe if, you know, the biggest developers in the world, I suppose, all came together and did it. But even still, like Nintendo's like, Hey, our games are, are running just fine. Even if in some cases they, no, they aren't, but it was like, Hey, we we're fine. And all of these indie studios that actually make us quite a bit of money, they're fine. And people got Apex Legends and Fortnite running on there. And they're making money. So they're fine. Um, I think it's a uh, a thing where you kind of can't talk Nintendo in anything. Nintendo operates on its own timeline. And most game developers are well aware of this. And it's, it's not worth their time to try to go change Nintendo. They're just going to be like, okay, cut the Switch version. Let's focus our resources somewhere else and hope for the best. Uh, from Pud, you think Dragon Quest X, the MMO, ever comes out here? Please, I need it. I feel like if it was going to come out, it would have it would have came out when they were talking about that last that last like batch of games, and they were talking about the Dragon Quest X. Ver uh, was, was there like a Dragon Quest X offline version that they made? Did I, that, something like that? And that even that didn't come out here or something? I, I can't remember exactly what they did, but there was that time where they updated like, oh, we're doing all this with Dragon Quest X, and here's a new version of Dragon Quest X, and that's also not coming to North America. Uh, I feel like it would have happened by now. Um, maybe though, if there's another Dragon Quest MMO in the future, they probably would release it here at the same time going forward because Dragon Quest has really surged in popularity here. Yeah, sorry about that, bud. Uh, it's just Kevin V. Hey, wait, what are what about the rest of the Konami stuff we heard about last year? Castlevania, Metal Gear Solid. Well, I mean. Yeah, I, I think if like if all this stuff is happening with Silent Hill, we could probably assume they're looking at doing similar things with Castlevania and Metal Gear Solid, right? Uh, I don't know how quickly that happens. I, I do think Silent, all this Silent Hill stuff is first. Um, and I, I will say with the Silent Hill stuff, it does seem like Sony is very involved in that stuff. So, you know, maybe Sony's trying to do the same thing with Metal Gear Solid. I don't know how interested uh, sony would be in castlevania um but but sony's definitely involved in the silent hill stuff so uh, maybe maybe the same with metal gear solid but i haven't heard anything new about those franchises and, and konami's plans for it um other than maybe we can assume based on what they're doing with silent hill that they would be doing the same with those things uh from dixie dean 82 leaked warzone 2 footage legit i haven't seen it but uh my understanding is, is that it is it is legit but it's it's older it's from like last year late last year so, um, yeah, I, we're going to be playing that. We're going to be seeing that very soon, and then we'll be playing it not long after that. Uh, there will probably be some tests here in the next couple of months. Um, from JUnit 2008, while many companies have made their soundtracks available through streaming platforms in the past few years, Nintendo, Nintendo continues to keep its music locked up and unavailable to even purchase. Why does Nintendo seem un uninterested in selling its music? So, I actually have an answer for this that I think is the real answer um this comes from actually a, a buddy of mine that's in our discord uh the game mess uh vj who uh, you might know is like the viking guitarist he played with the, the video games live um either way i we, he was we, we were we talked about this before and he brought up this very important legal thing that is like if you put out music recorded music for sale or consumption in north america and the united states 
you then have to, you're subject to like mechanical copyright at that point or something like that. I'm getting a lot of these details wrong, but in general, it means that now these songs can be covered and people could put out covers of your songs and they are subject to the, the precedent of like, okay, if someone does a cover of your song, they only owe you this much, this much amount of money and it's not a lot. And Nintendo's like, doesn't even want to deal with that. Now, that's why I, I have the Japanese CDs of, um, of Link's Awakening in my van, in my minivan, because I'm very cool. Uh, but they could put that on Japan because they don't have the same copyright laws when it comes to covering music. But if they put it out here, they would be subject to that. And then now anyone could go cover that music and Nintendo is very against that idea. So I think, I think that's what is happening here. I think Nintendo's lawyers are just like, oh, gross, we don't want to do that. And, you know, Nintendo, especially Nintendo of America, is a law firm. So they, they, do, they, like, that's what they care about more than games almost is like how they can use the law to their advantage and use the law to, to, you know, get the most out of it. Um, it does seem like that's probably what's happening with their music. Uh, from Eat the Hype, good morning, Jeff. Any hope slash indication that whatever this Last of Us remake package ends up being, it comes to PC as well? Yeah, I think that that's probably the kind of thing where they announced it at the same time, right? Like, why do all this work and then just put it on PlayStation? I think you, you say, hey, we've done all this work and it's coming to PlayStation and three months later, it'll be on PC. I think that's how they do it. Um, so yeah, there's definitely hope for that 100%. From Swaffle, just unboxed by Steam Deck. Yeah. Do you have a go-to resource slash community slash YouTube channel for things like old game emulation or loading non-Steam game apps? Um, yeah, okay. So the first place you're going to want to do is go to emudeck.com or something like that. Just Google emudeck, E-M-U-D-E-C-K. All the instructions on there are very easy to follow. If you do want help though, Retro Game Core, and that's C-O-R-P-S on YouTube, follow his guides for setting up emudeck on, on there and it's, it's very helpful. Um, I would follow that, that's a good resource. And then uh, for loading non-Steam apps, um, there are, like that stuff continues to change, but I would just like see, I would just Google it and see what the most recent sort of uh, best practices is for that. The, sometimes there's new apps in the Discover Store and the Linux uh, OS that make that even simpler uh, than when I last did it. Because I, what, the way I did it was download the Windows versions, add those to Steam, open those with Proton, install them, um, and that's kind of a pain. So maybe there's an easier version of doing that. What's up, dude? Oh, you got you got the oh yeah you got the hockey net. It's a, it's a hockey net. We can play hockey. Uh, it's not. That's no, not ruined. And that's just the way it's supposed to be. See. Uh oh. Oh, go blurry. Um. Yeah, well, it's not ruined. But it is a hat. <laughs> no, it's not. I'm just joking. Here, go play with it. I'm I'm really am finishing up very soon. Uh, I don't know. Your ball was upstairs. You could get. You could play soccer with it. Go get your soccer ball. Um. Okay. From, well, no, we did Swaffle from Silver Strike. Any hands on time with the PSVR 2 or heard any rumblings about it? Does it seem like Sony is going to do a big push behind it again? So, you know, they showed it off at GDC in March. And I'm pretty sure after they did that the first time, they launched it later that year. Um, I, I still think that seems very likely that, you know, they PSVR VR 2 this holiday, especially like, to have some hardware, I mean, it's probably going to sell out like crazy too. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's very likely that it comes out this holiday. Uh, if not early next year, it's the same difference at a certain point. Uh, but yeah, in that six month time frame from you know Q4 into Q1, I, I do expect PSVR 2 to launch in that time frame. And the only rumblings I've heard is they do intend to show this off again in a more substantial way very soon. I wouldn't be surprised if some of that is related to E3. Um, and maybe that is why, um, maybe, maybe this is where the wires get crossed. Like maybe they have like a smaller event where they show off PSVR 2 and, and stuff like that. And, and that, that's why like, oh, people are hearing that there's going to be a PlayStation E3 showcase in early June. Maybe that's not quite what, what is happening. Maybe it's just a PSVR 2 showcase, which I suppose is still counts. Um, but I expect us to hear about it again very soon. Uh, from Dominito, Grub, is Microsoft looking to pick up non-exclusive games to bolster the 2022 Game Pass lineup 
since Starfield, Stalker 2, and Redfall all got delayed out of 2022. I, I did hear that Stalker 2 might still make December, but I, I don't know. I guess I don't know if I believe that. Um, Non-exclusive games to both, like, I don't know. They have a lot of money to spend, and they could spend it on adding games to Game Pass day one. Yeah, they, they could do that. Um, But then we come back to, like, what games would be open to them. Uh, there, There's a Need for Speed coming out this year. They could do that, but, I mean, they might have Forza Motorsport 8. I suppose that's different enough, but still, it doesn't feel like that makes much of a dent. Um, Gotham Knights is one that people keep saying that seems a little bit too big. Uh, I don't know. It's it's a tough it's a tough situation. There's not a lot to pick from. Saints Row, yeah, Saints Row is the one that everyone keeps saying, and I'm like, you know what? Maybe the, the, the thing with these games and the Game Pass deals is they get signed at the very last minute. The very last minute is when everyone's like, okay, you know what? We've seen the pre-order numbers. Here's what we, what we can expect. Here's what we would need to make this deal happen. And in the last week before a game comes out, they signed a Game Pass. So. You know, maybe that maybe maybe we just have to wait until like we get closer to something like Saints Row to find out if that could really happen. But Saint, you know, Saints Row is coming from Embracer, and I my my assumption with Embracer, you know, the the Embracer Group family, my assumption with them is they just want to have a ton of content so that they can do stuff like make big deals with companies like Microsoft and their Game Pass service. Uh, so th- I would assume that that would be something they would probably be open to. No, I don't think it's broken. You just got to set it down on the ground and then just kick the ball into it. But not here. Let's do it over there where you have more space. Sorry, I got her a Nerf soccer ball and she's very excited. Um, From Viaz, hi, Sir Grub. Is there any moment at a movement at turn 10 indicating they are close to release? Um, Nothing like that. But I mean, they've been working on that game for a very long time. They've had a ton of extra time. Uh they've they've definitely been working on updating their technology so they didn't need the extra time but at the end of the day it is another forza game that was always meant to come out this year i think that like all of the it would be hard for me to believe that that game wouldn't be ready for this year um but you know game development right who knows and maybe they're gonna have to delay that too and that would be an internal delay they have not announced that game is coming out this year uh higher noobs what's up with nintendo and saudi arabia i mean your public company anybody can buy you you know fucking lucifer becomes corporeal and becomes a stock trader it's probably already happened um you could you could buy stock at you um i at least that that's my understanding like, i don't know can can a company stop someone from buying their stock like I don't did did Saudi Arabia buy it from Nintendo themselves, or did they just buy five percent of, of extending stock on the on the uh, on the market? I, I haven't actually looked at it. So, I mean, if, if Nintendo sold Saudi Arabia the stock itself, that's pretty disappointing. Um, I, I guess I'd be a little bit frustrated with Nintendo for doing that. Uh, but at the same time, this is a company or a company. Well, I mean, yes, it, it is a company, Saudi Arabia and Saudi Aramco. Um, they have a lot of money. And they are looking to diversify for the future, and they have they have earmarked video games as one potential to do that, a uh, potential pathway of doing that. And we talked about this with SNK and all these other things. They want to take that oil money and turn it into a vast and diverse business portfolio uh, before like 2050, long before 2050, so that by the time 2050 gets here, and we are really looking at what's next after um, after uh, fossil fuels that Saudi Arabia has a future in place. Um, it's just it's just a shame that its most recent past and its long-term past is, uh, you know, so prob- problematic and killing journalists. Um, from Big Knife, have you heard anything about in any, upcame- any upcoming Resident Evil games? Apparently, Rebecca Chambers is part of the next Dead by Daylight Resident Evil expansion, which seems like a weird choice unless those rumors about a Revelations 3 having rebecca are accurate that i mean i do think that they probably are going to go back to revelations and i do think those rumors are probably true um so that that would be i think that does make a lot of sense uh but you know this we still got to get resident evil 4 remake i think that's first before everything else from paul w graham has the recent crypto downturn soured any of gaming's gaming sector's nft plans i think we're, we're still um i mean obviously it has 
Ubisoft did their big earnings and they didn't mention it once, even though they mentioned it in their previous earnings stuff. So just like taking the temperature of how willing they are to talk about it as like a potential future, um, some of them have begun to cool on it. Square Enix still bringing it up when they're saying this is why we're selling whatever we're going to do, you know, blockchain stuff. Um, but a lot of those things are lagging indicators. Um, I talked about this like last week or the week before how we were, we did our game speed event and uh, we talked to investors and investors were saying like 90% of the pitches they were getting were from developers pitching NFT games. And of course they do that because they think that's what investors are going to invest in. That's what they're excited about. Um, and so that's a lagging indicator. We don't know if that is actually indicative of like where the industry is really going to go. It's only indicative of what, of what game developers think investors want to hear. Um, and that could change, especially since like, there's been a lot of downturn since that, since our event, it's, since we've heard this, uh, but some people are still going to be like, this is what investors believe in and are willing to give us money. But I, I bet that changes very fast. And so the next time we check in on this stuff, I bet that number goes down from 90%. Um, and when it goes down, I, I mean, it's going to hit zero because investors are going to get interested in the next buzzword. And they're going to stop being, they're like, well, the last one didn't work. I'm not going to put any more money into that. I, or, and, and I already have all of my NFT investments. I have a dozen NFT bets and I don't need any more. I'm moving on to the next buzzword. And if those things pay off, whatever. If they don't, whatever. I'm moving on to the next thing. And so, like, it's going to go from 90% to zero very fast. Um, I think we're right in the middle of that downturn in terms of, what game developers and what game publishers are, are expecting and what they um, think can work for their future. Uh, from Octo, Jeff looking extra Momoa today. <laughs> momoa e today. Thank you, yeah. Uh, sorry to him, but thank you to me. From me. Uh, from Chuck D, or yeah, Chuck D29. Hey, Jeff, just wanted to say thanks for keeping it yummy. Of course, I'm always gonna keep it yummy for y'all. That's uh, my number one goal in life. Uh, all right, should we wrap this up? You getting hungry? I'm getting hungry. Yeah. Yeah. You really want? Oh. Oh, you're so okay. You want to play? Oh, you want to play soccer? Okay. All right. Let me finish up here. Okay. Go upstairs. Start practicing. I'll be right there. All right. So let's see if there are a few more questions and then I'm going to go play soccer with Emmy. Um, that's fun. She just uh, decided to set that up herself. Uh, from Luter Jennings, dear Mr. Snacks, I love you. I love you too. Anyways, I'm playing Call of Duty right now, and I can't get over how weird it is to see Mecha Godzilla shoot down Snoop Dogg in a World War II base plane. What the actual fuck? How are these deals formed? I mean, they're just piecemeal, and like, first of all, this is the natural endpoint of video games. When the first video game was created, we were always going to end up exactly where you just described. Like, this was inevitable. But the, re the way that these deals happened is. If you are a company like Activision, if you are making Call of Duty and a big part of your business is, you know, recurrent consumer spending, uh, you just have teams in place whose job it is, is to go out and make deals and form relationships and to find ways to synergize these things. And so, you know, you probably hire someone from the film industry and they have good relationships with the people that make Godzilla. And they're like, hey, let's bring that stuff into Call of Duty. like. It makes sense. Like uh, everything else is here. Bruce Willis is here. Everyone's here. Snoop Dogg is here. Like maybe like let's, let's get Snoop Dogg playing as well. Um, when you just have like a dedicated team, like making whatever deal they can, you're going to end up with some weird stuff. And it's kind of cool. Uh, from Vagrant Gamer. Hello, Jeff. When are we going to see you in the pit? Arcade pit. Soon, I hope. I really do want to get in there. Uh, I do think me and Mike Bonatti should go in there and destroy everybody. Um, but they've, they've been bringing in some awesome teams and I've been, I've, I have fun just watching the arcade pit. It's very well done. Uh, from Dio game. Do you think we'll see, uh, oh, see Starcraft return? I do think we will eventually see an, a new Starcraft news. I think eventually we get several new Starcraft things. It'll probably take them time to sort of reestablish their development prowess though. So they can get back to that. Um, but I do think we get another like actual, like, like just Starcraft four. Yes, that'll happen. Uh, from Climax, will Square Enix ever be satisfied? No. Okay, from Dixie Dean helping us out here. Last Red Dead Redemption 2 update was at 39 million. There are just so few games that have gotten to that 40 million mark, which this game probably is at by now. 
um, or will be soon. Um, and it's just, it, it, it would be nuts if that game did not meet their expectations. Uh, Vexo Grub, the great god of all gaming news and beauty. Wow, people are being very nice today. I really appreciate it. Hear my prayers. Will there be Sly Cooper 5 soon? To your greatness and in your name, I will now go and burn a copy of Windows 10. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, I, I mean, listen, I, I, I've only heard the same rumors that I think everyone else has heard that there is a Sly Cooper thing in the works, but I can't confirm that. I, I really hope it is because uh, I know a lot of people love those games. That is a series that I might use the steam deck to go and like look back and see what it's been like because i've never played a sly cooper so and I, it does seem like it was always my thing i probably would enjoy it uh from uh, vertelli um do we know anything new about the next bioshock game it's been a while since it was officially announced or i'm sorry was unofficially announced um i can't remember i feel like i got a bunch of details and now i can't remember um i can't remember but there yes i think we we do some of those details were out there and i feel like we might have even talked about them on this show but at this point it's been a while and i can't remember them anymore um but well, maybe we could look into it again i bioshock feels like one that could get like announced this year as well right we'll see okay i'm gonna go to the top here i'm finishing up right now kiddo wrap what does wrap up mean wrap up means you're finishing it means like Oh, uh, you want to make sure you get everything put in place so that you can close down, which is what we're going to do right now. Uh, from that, Pinguino, any idea what the Final Fantasy 35th anniversary news will be? Um, I don't know. I mean, I expected them probably to talk about uh, Final Fantasy 16, and and I mean, I don't know. 35th anniversary, is this going to be an event? I actually don't know what form it's going to take, but if it's going to be like some big thing, that's probably where they do talk about all the new Final Fantasy stuff because uh, it makes some sense. What's going on with uh, Indiana Jones? Was it was it at Machine Games? Yeah, that's at Machine Games. Um, and it's probably still years off. But I wouldn't be surprised if we get like a, a teaser, the C3. Uh, when will we see Monster Hunter World 2? It's scheduled for next year, according to that Capcom leak. I bet that takes an extra year. Uh, and I bet we see that next year for the first time. Because they haven't even released the Monster Hunter uh, Rise DLC, right? We're still waiting for that. So... I, I think it'll probably be some time before we get Monster Hunter World 2. Uh, MFK, Sly, Jack, and Ratchet. Uh, all right, I'm going to... I'm going to marry... I think I'm going to marry Ratchet. I'm going to... Well, that's not right. No, I'm going to... Okay, no. I'm going to marry Sly. I'm going to F Jack, and I'm going to kill Ratchet. I love Ratchet, but that's how it goes sometimes. Don't marry anybody? Okay, I'll just marry your... Okay, I'm, I'll marry my mom. I'll just stay married to mama. Don't worry. Yes. Cool. My kid thinks I'm going <laughs> to be leaving now. <laughs> All right, let's wrap up, everybody. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, I really appreciate it. I'll be back with another new episode next week. Um, <laughs> now I got to explain. Now it's time to explain divorce. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, no, nothing. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Um <laughs> Uh, yeah, new episode next week. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait to do this again. It's the highlight of my week. Well, you know what? Let's take a look at the calendar. Next week is the... Oh, Jesus. So here's how it's going to go. I'm going to do a show next week. And then as soon as we get done, I'm going to put everything in boxes. And I'm like going to be leaving my house. Uh, but the Thursday after that, I will probably be traveling. Uh, I still kind of want to do a show, though. And I bet I can figure it out. Uh, but I'm, I, let me see where I'm going to be. So we'll figure that out in the next week or so, but next week we'll be back here, ready to go. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you so much. Moving in with Sly. That's right. Uh, until then, have a good one. Take care of yourself and goodbye. Ow. It's a blast.